There's good news and there's bad news. The good news is, ten years ago, I moved to an island. You wouldn't believe how beautiful this place is. Close to a city, two cities in fact, but full of magical, almost untouched places. A small town with a Saturday market, nice people, nice animals, Nothing that bites. In the middle of the island, trees. Lots of trees. A few small mountains, lakes, more trees. And here's the unbelievable part. It's in Canada, my own country, and yet it hardly ever snows. So how do we keep the population down? Well, there are two ferries. One takes forever. The other goes to the wrong place from which you take another ferry. And if you have lots of money, which most people don't, there are other ways to get back and forth. Okay, are you ready for the bad news? It's probably not fair to describe this man that way. He's just a businessman doing what he's supposed to do, trying to make some money. We own you know, virtually all the property around the provincial park and on the far side of that mountain. And at the top of the mountain, there's the uh, Maxwell Lake, which is where the watershed is, and we own most of the property around that area as well. Everything behind us here, this is uh, virtually all Mount Bruce, all back in here. So we own virtually everything you can see back here. And uh, pretty much, I mean, pretty much everything you see, we own. We're talking about 5,000 acres, about a tenth of the island. The previous owner was a prince, a German prince. He did very little logging. But hey, this is North America. If you own the trees, you can do whatever you want. You don't need anyone's permission. We're trying to protect our island and uh, developers have just come in without us knowing it. They're already going to negotiate with us. We've come a long way. At the beginning, they were just going to come in and race, and now yeah. they're going to... Um, all this in a week, I mean... This all this in three days. Oh, well, we have no plans for subdividing. We have no plans for rezoning. I've heard this over and over again. When are we going to hear what their plans really are, and when are we going to stop this clear cutting? <laughs> My sister-in-law was, was, was a tenant on this land, and I got a phone call from her, and she said, Brian, there's men driving up and down our driveway and flagging through our sheep paddock. And she said, I went and asked them who they were, and they said, we can't tell you, but we'll be clear-cutting this property next week. My brother, who is a fifth-generation Salt Spring Islander, is leaving Salt Spring Island. I know Bryony well. And, um, our kids go to school together. She's not just pissed off because of her brother. She's always fighting to save things that need protection. Bats, frogs, even houses. She and her husband bought this place in the city for one dollar to keep it from being destroyed. Then they cut it in half and ferried it over here and put it together again. Look at this place. It's just stunning. Especially this time of day when the lights light on it. And, then, and you can tell why these these are the last places on earth to get sun on the coast. Everywhere else is dark and getting ready for night and still. This is where everything, I mean, everything comes to roost in a Gary Oak Meadow because it's the last place it hits sun. The turkey vultures come in and look around and the lizards are lying out in the rocks soaking up the last sun. I mean, it's just where everyone wants to be. And to think that two people could come along and make an enormous profit and threaten them is just, I, I can't, I just don't know how they can, I don't know how people, how do we allow that to happen? We, 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 missed, we missed the uh, 1230 ferry. <sighs> Here's the other conqueror of our island, 
coming to claim his new territory. Hello, Jack. Oh. Hey, Jonathan. How are you? I'm exhausted. Uh, welcome home. <laughs> I do the same for you, but... <laughs> uh. Hey, Mark. Oh. We'll be right back. You are? I'm Terry Dean. Hello, Terry. So Pleasure to make it. This is Cinderella. The guy with his back to us is Jonathan LeDrew. He's married to a video camera, documenting everything that happens. The funny thing is, he's being sued by the man he's going to meet because he chained himself to one of Texada's logging trucks. Oh boy, a protest. It feels like I'm back in the 60s. Someone asked the kids to try to act friendly to the new owners. It could be they're overdoing it. <laughs> well, so, so certainly she knows. And the signs say hug a, hug I'm, a logger. I'm Derek. <laughs> I've, I've certainly seen your photograph. <laughs> He there? saw her photograph in the newspaper. She changed herself to one of his trucks as well. We don't think for a moment that the clear cutting is in our best interest, given the value of our land. But it's, it's, it's our perception that we're not clear cutting. We are patch clear cutting. We are being as careful as we, as we can. We do want to do the right thing. We do want to do a good job of what we're doing. We realize that you folks prefer sustainable logging in terms of your definition. Thank you so much. Um, you know, our plan is to harvest harvest our timber on a selective basis over the next kind of you know three years. Now, if we can do it in less time, probably the better for all of us. I mean, we we don't you know we don't want to be over here for a long time in sort of a negative environment. As I said earlier, we we would actually prefer to sit down with with various groups with the Islands Trust to see if we can't come to a better solution for all parties. Is this in uh, in terms of making some sort of concessions to the community? There's no way, at the end of the day, we're going to keep everybody happy. And we apologize for that. Why don't we slow down the logging long enough for the process to take place, which is all that we've ever asked for? We should for. actually log a lot quicker, too. It's all relative. If um, I was to organize a, uh, a negotiation, get some key people together, would you withdraw all your lawsuits, you and Robert, in exchange for that? Um, You know, it, it's it's of right. You'd have to confer with Robert. No, but, it's, yeah. it's, it's both Rob and I's call. You know, I mean, I'm I'm, I'm sort of the softer one. Rob's a bit a bit tougher than I am. So so it's really not fair for me to answer that question. But it puts Rob in a bad position. We would certainly discuss it. How about we? We, 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 we don't we don't we don't like law. We don't we do not like <laughs> lawsuits. But you handed out quite a, a number of them <laughs> for someone who doesn't like doing it. This man was with Greenpeace and is used to fighting for forests in remote areas. Now, as the logging moves closer and closer to big cities, he's defending the place where he lives. This house right, has shaken from the blasting that those guys are doing. You know, it's miles away. But, you know, I can hear it and I can feel it, right? The, the, my water comes from Lake Maxwell, you know? Every day I'm under the shower, the water I drink and cook with and everything stands to be affected by what these guys are going to do, right? I don't even know these people. My father was the largest cattle rancher in Canada, ran about 14,000 head, and he had three or four ranches in B.C. I mean, our, our family was, you know, kind of a middle-class family, and uh, I don't think we ever, you know, wanted for anything. I, we're, we certainly weren't wealthy. I met Rob. Uh, we initially started financing deals for Rob, um, our family, about probably 17 or 18 years, uh, maybe 19 years ago. And then Rob went out on his own, and then we ended up financing deals with Rob and vice versa. He's financed deals for myself, and, um, and we've done business for about, I guess, 18 years. A hell of a good guy, very, very honest, straightforward. I love what I do. And sometimes I make a lot of money at it. And sometimes I've lost millions at it. Great community guy, let's give him a nice welcome, Baldy. The community makes a brave decision. They're gonna buy the land back and log some of it themselves, but do it right so that the forest can survive. One small problem, they have to raise the money first. If you go down to the woods today, you better go in disguise. If you go down to the woods today, you're in for a big 
surprise. Most of us on the island are refugees running away from large cities. The trees are a big part of why we came here in the first place. Now, with this devastation, we have practical things to worry about. Like what does this do to our property values and will the tourists keep coming? But I tell you, it goes deeper than that. It feels like some kind of amputation. First Nations people say the land is a part of us. Well, maybe that's not just a metaphor. On Salt Spring, we're in mourning. Put up a cross for every truckload that has come down off the island. evolves over time, I want you all to realize that myself and every police officer also live on this island. It's our home too, okay? It's our home as well. We care about this community. We care about all you people. Things may happen over the time and things may change, but keep that in mind, we're out there. We are your neighbors and we're your friends as well. The Capital Regional District has identified uh, several areas as parks and Texada Logging has just gone right ahead and started cutting those areas before the assessments are done. How can we say to people, keep giving money, keep fundraising, how can we keep the governments interested in purchasing this land if it's all going to be cut anyhow? All they want to do today is, is <coughs> unload their logging trucks mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and go away and they won't log anymore today and they're not logging tomorrow as well and they're looking at going for an, in, uh, an all encompassing injunction and stuff which of course as you understand goes into the courts. Right. I think we've already decided that we're going to be here till dusk. I mean we are simply spokespeople. Yes. The decision we would make we would have to gather together in a circle okay. and see if that interest is there or not. Okay. Okay. I understand that fully. All right. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Now we're, this is new. We're on private property. How do we approach it? Do we arrest everybody for trespassing and take them off right away, which we are perfectly within our rights? Or do we still take the same tactics we do when it's on Crown land when we don't have the authority to arrest people on, on Crown land for trespassing? Salt Spring is the only place in the world where the cops don't scare me. This guy doesn't just enforce the law. He's a skilled mediator who's equally respected by loggers and protesters and by kids as well as adults. I think it's really important that we respect these guys, the guys that are logging these, or driving these trucks. And I believe that my feeling is that we should let them through to empty their trucks. I feel that we should let the trucks go by and just not let them come back the other way to fill up. Well, I'm for staying here as long as we have to to keep the trucks here. Let's just finally stop them. Let's just stop them now. It's a battle, right? It's war. <laughs> and, uh, you know, win or lose, it's, it's, within, uh, it's within our nature to, to engage. Wow. 
whatever the property's worth. Um, you can pay two thirds of it. And we'll take a third off as a donation. So that we only have to buy it at 1.2 million, and it was assessed yeah. value as 300. Well, Brian, well, I tell you, you're wrong. I'm personally handling those okay. negotiations, well, Brian. So you know what I'm going to do? The next time I have a meeting with Mike Larmer, I'm going to ask you along, and then you can well, then just see just, what's you actually don't going have to ask on. Me just make it public. No, you know what? I will ask you along. I'd love for you to be there. I couldn't be happier. Okay, everything the developers are doing is perfectly legal, but the islanders are starting to get angry. They say they're being asked to pay two or three times what they expected for each piece of land. And while they negotiate, they say the logging speeds up. They're on the phone trying to raise money to buy a specific area, and hey, the trees that they're trying to save are gone. It was right here six months ago that I walked with Brent Kapler, the property manager, project manager of Texada Holdings. At the time, we discussed Ecoforestry versus clear cutting. Uh, he said that he was going to be sensitive with his clear cuts. Well, I don't know. To me, it seems pretty much most of everything is gone. It's a desert. It's extremely shocking, all this to me, because, you know, I'd, I'd walked through this forest many times. The previous owners had always been fine with people walking through their land and this was a very, very special place to me, and, um, yeah. You actually do plan to actively reforest some of this land, do you? Yeah, pr pursuant to all the rules and regulations, yeah, we you, plan you to exceed them. Yeah. that the rules and regs on private forest land are zippo. That's just, there's nothing in there. I'm sure you know that as well as I do. I mean, it's, that's, that's nice to hide behind. I mean, it's like the Forest Practices Code. I mean, Julian at first said that you were going to be, that you were going to follow Forest Practice Code's regs. And then when we pushed him on that, he said, oh no, we'll be guided by Forest Practice Code regulations, which means we'll obey them when we please and we won't when we don't. Well, that's, you know, that's pretty uh, feeble. I mean, no one's saying that the, the first pass and then the second pass were great logging. It was devastating. Do you know what and used how, to be and, on this and island? How about this, Brian? Salmon. Look around. Look around. How's this? Were out there. Wolves were here. No. Bears were here. Mm -hmm. We had, be you know, this was an, a rich, rich ecosystem. Where, where did it's they go, devastated. Where did all those, do yeah, they all we left? came, Just, we logged them. Do you think they left them? when I arrived? I Rob no. McDonald arrived and all of those, <laughs> you know, birds and animals all left. What you're doing I mean, that's insane. This is my friend Harry's place. He was a professor of mathematics back east, and like many people on the island, moved here because he wanted to simplify his life. Now, Harry plays guitar, sings in an Irish band, sells vegetables, and runs the website for the campaign. The motivation of MacDonald and his Yes Boys, Trithuli and Co, to me seems purely greed and greed that must be motivated somewhere by fear. And one wonders how deep a fear you'd have to have to say a million is not enough, I need two, and two is not enough, I need four. Um, their total disregard for the environment is just stunning. I made the mistake a couple of weeks ago on, on the day of one of the blockades where the grand gesture of flying in MacDonald and the Trithui boys resulted in MacDonald being surrounded by questioners. I made the mistake of asking him a question. Is it true that CRD has expressed interest in Block 50? Yes. Is it true that you're clear cutting that right now? Well, we're not. We've put we've put roads in that area just recently. Right. So I don't think, is we've, it started, true that I don't think at, we've started logging in there. Is it true that at Portlock Park in November you promised us that as soon as CRD or anybody, any NGO, expressed serious interest? that you would stop logging in that area? No, we, what we've no, said is... is the answer, is it either true or false? Not exactly what okay. you're saying. No, right, you're not, you. not exactly what okay. you're saying. It's a derivative of what you're saying. We've said if CRD has interest in certain areas, they should lay them out for us, and then we should establish timelines. Because if they say, hey, we might be interested in buying it 10 years from now... And as soon as I finished asking it, I really felt like throwing up. I thought, why bother? This is a man who's impervious to any appeal to the finer things in life. This is a man who couldn't see the beauty in a tree, I think. Certainly not today, maybe not tomorrow, maybe never. Um, so they're here for greed, and I suppose power, and the, the feeling that they're important people. 
And in the scheme of things for us right now, looking out at the Fulford Valley or looking up around Mount Tuam, at the desecration around the Buddhist monastery, yes, they're powerful people. They have exacted a terrible price on our land. But in the whole scheme of things, they're, they're midgets. They'll be forgotten about in a hundred years' time. Um, I think my rooster is agreeing me, with me in that nature will win. When I walked into that protest, you know, Wednesday before last, and there was a big crowd of 30, I walked in, I wasn't angry at anybody. Now, there was a few people angry at me. I mean, they just saw it as Dr. Evil had just walked into their midst. We don't want our trees cut down because our trees clear our air. It's also a home for animals, and it's a type of food for other types of insects. For example, like wood bugs. They eat wood, and that's their only type of food they like. Okay, are you ready? Hep, 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 yeah! Come in next time. My name's Helen E. Davison, and I've gathered here with other concerned residents from Salt Spring, putting together this petition, of which we have 2,000 names out of a population of 10,000 people on the island. And we're demanding that the legislation be changed so that we do not have industrial logging on our island. It's got to stop. Our community have done everything possible to try and stop this. We have raised nearly a half a million dollars on a small island. Salt Springers are supposed to be laid back. Now there's no time for kayaks, gardens, and even sex. Just meetings all day and emails at night. Musicians, actors, comedians, and lawyers donate their time. Artists auction off paintings and everyone is trying very hard to hang on to their sense of humor. The earth is going to throw up over us. <laughs> oh, the earth is going to throw up over us. <laughs> We're polluting all our water and we know we have another. This spot here is on the bluff overlooking San Narrows, and this is Texada land. This is an unbelievably gorgeous landscape here, and once this is disturbed, it's gone forever. You can't get it back. And right now we have the most unbelievable opportunity to make this a park and to preserve it for 500 years. But once we touch it, it's gone. You can't ever bring it back. And I'm heartbroken, totally heartbroken. And I go along and, and I'm happy and I'm very energetic and I love the community effort in what we're doing to save the lands. There's a lot of joy, there's a lot of fun, but fundamentally deep down, it's totally heartbreaking. The logging companies in BC have enjoyed a hundred years of expanding into new areas. Why should we give them any more? Let them put their money where their mouth is. If they're interested in managing and maintaining forests, well, do so. You've been moving into new areas for 100 years. Why do you need more if, if it's true what you say that forests will regenerate? Because the, they've got their injunction in lightning speed yesterday. Normally it takes two or three days. Um, they somehow managed to get one in one business day. And uh, the only way we can really be effective in delaying the traffic of logs on the road here is for somebody to lock down physically on the vehicle and uh, to actually stop the vehicle for a while. So I plan to lock down on the front axle. Let's get up closer. Yeah. Let's get up closer. Everyone bunch up. Bunch right up. Bunch right up. Not putting anything on this truck. Get away from the truck.
Derek Trasui lives on a ranch, hundreds of kilometers away from the island. Guess what this place is called? I've always believed that one should have two or three professions. Uh, my first start was in real estate. Then we find ourselves in the cattle business. Then we find ourselves in the timber business. Though my father was in those business, I mean, businesses, I didn't know much about them. I and mean, I'm still learning. I think, I think as humans, we're always learning. And that's, that's the exciting thing in life, is the change, the evolution, the learning, the learning process, you know. Oh, the money, the money, the money. Um, Globe and Mail wants to speak to you guys. Yeah, we've um, we've been down here blockading for the past two days. We've um, stopped the, stopped the logging trucks from from moving. Stayed on the axle. Eh? No, that would have that would have made too made my life too easy. <clears throat> the application of the plaintiff Texada Land Corporation for an interlocutory injunction restraining interference with its logging operations coming on for hearing this day at the courthouse, 800 Smythe Street, Vancouver, British Columbia. I know how it works. <laughs> okay. I guess I can. Hopefully, I can speak first. And actually, it goes the other way, right? Does it? No. I think. This way. As you, most people here probably know, you've been served with an injunction that you're on this property here illegally. Does everybody understand that? Anybody have any questions about it? I wasn't here. I wasn't here. Okay. I don't yeah. And the second thing I have to deal with is Mr. McGugan that's attached to the truck there. And I have to talk to him in private. And I'll ask Melanie, she can stand with me and listen to what I have to say to him. Just Melanie, my, if you agree to that, to talk to him and and to see what his intentions are and what I need to do because it's in a difficult position and he has to understand what his rights are and what he may face. If they use the pepper spray and create enough pain, they're hoping that I'll voluntarily unlock so that I can extricate myself from this whole situation and then they tell me off and then the truck would leave. So I guess it's dependent, you know, then becomes a question of um, pain tolerance, I suppose. Yeah. 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 So this is not the first time somebody's been locked down, and it's not the first time that somebody's been removed um, without pepper spray. So there are alternatives, and if he doesn't look into that, then <laughs> he, I don't, he's lost all of my respect as a human being. Better not bring my kids down here then. No. No. Okay. No. Okay. No. no doubt. Yeah, he'll be down there shortly. Have work. Um, so I don't know if anybody's asked if a doctor can be present while you're, if you decide to put the pepper spray in. Oh, that's going to be such a last resort. There's, I got so many other things to, to do okay, before. Can I my question, please? The, the, we are all trained 
police officers are all trained in the decontamination of pepper spray. I'm asking you. No, a doctor won't be here. Why not? Because I'm trained and all my constables are trained in decontamination. I'm asking you theoretically. No, because you're starting to bring up, you're getting people hysterical over something that... I'm not getting anybody hysterical. It was your suggestion. You're the one that brought it up. I'm just following, um, the person, doing follow-up. That's something I have to consider. See, that's, but I'm, I'm, not I'm promising you it you. is the last thing in the world safety. I will be doing, okay? Okay. It's the last thing. Okay. As opposed to what, what comes I'm having then. the fire chief come right now to see if they have equipment that the jaws alive or something that can cut it off. Okay. Okay? I'll probably go to the jail for a little while when they get me off the truck. Okay? So, but everything's fine. Yeah. So there's chicken in the fridge. You, you guys are going to have to make your own dinner. And there's going to be somebody coming over to check on you. And it took one person to kill John Kennedy. One person killed John Kennedy. It only takes one person to stop a logging truck. Only one. So on any given day, someone can go and stand in front of a logging truck. And this has happened, right? They jump out in front of the logging truck. The logging truck screeches to a stop. And then that person, for instance, there's a, there's a guy that's done it more than once. Then he'll get underneath the logging truck and chain himself to it. The islanders pride themselves on being reasonable people. The fire chief told the protesters that they were tying up the whole volunteer fire department. Not a good idea if there were an emergency. So Rod McGuckin agreed to unlock himself, having stopped the trucks for a full day. My lord, he said unto me, Do you like my garden so fair? Well, you may live in this garden if you let my tree stand tall and I'll return in the cool of the day. Now is the cool of the day. Now is the cool of the day. Oh, this earth is a garden, the garden of my Lord, and he was in his garden, in the cool of the day. See, you hear the winter wren? They're just singing away. How like old did this? <coughs> These alder trees live till they're about 50. There's two wild roses here. It's just going to come into bud so you can celebrate its budding. But if you nibble these petals... The campaign is attracting idealistic young people from all over Canada and the States. Even some homeless kids from the streets of Vancouver and Victoria. And he walks in his garden In the cool of the day The water's getting polluted too. The air is getting polluted. I don't have a car. I mean, I've, I've made this personal choice for myself. I'm not going to get my license until I can drive a car that doesn't pollute. The kids are becoming part of the protest. They aren't afraid of getting arrested. And since they have no money or property, they just laugh at the idea of being sued by the developers. Yeah, we're really holding these guys up. They're, they're, they, the logs can't get to um, the pulp, pulp mill to be sold, so they're really, um, hopefully they'll start to get nervous as well and realize that the whole community is against the logging here. If we didn't do anything, we would lose. And by trying, we're winning, you see? And that we want to do something else with our beautiful island. I have a little Shangri-La where I live on Shepherd Hills. And when I came here and, and they said, well, you have to go up Cranberry Road and then down Shepherd Hills. And I thought, well, this, is, this must be some magic place. <coughs> and it is.
can't give in to people that are breaking the law. I can't do that. It would be the wrong thing to do. I mean, history tells you you can't give in to people that are breaking the rules. Right? Appeasement begets only greater conflict. And the history of time tells you that. Right? It doesn't matter if it's uh, Chamberlain and Hitler at Munich. Right? I mean, example, example, example in history. You cannot give in to people breaking the law. Don't make that B is 87. She's planning to get other seniors involved in the protest. She says they have a lot at stake because their grandchildren will suffer if they don't do something. If you want a little excitement in your lives, just get off the old rocking chair and come out. <laughs> but I guess they'll think I'm a, a terror. They'll say, well, you know, it's been logged many times before, and where you're living, it's logged. But more, the thing is, it's not wholesale. They want it all at once. You know, get out of here as fast as you can. And if you run over somebody and trample on somebody's soul, or what does it matter? They, they don't matter. It's just the money that they want. Now the holes are opening up one, two, three, four. And I wonder what their strategy is. Is it that they're saying, hey guys, if you think this looks bad, we can do a lot worse. Get out your purses and start paying us the extravagant amounts that we want. Capital seeking the highest return, no matter what, at any cost, is not going to work for us any longer. Time has come to change. For 20 years, I investigated white collar uh, activities in the stock markets of Canada. I moved to Salt Spring to get away from these sort of dealers, but they follow you everywhere. <laughs> the money didn't come from uh, the players and the names that we know about. Manufacturers Life Insurance of Toronto, they're the people who are financing what's going on here, and they're the people who should probably hear Islanders' questions as much as anyone. We want Vanuard! We want Vanuard! We want Vanuard! The more they fight against us, the more we'll pull together and fight back. Right on! Data Land Corporation purchased the land with uh, financing from Manulife in Toronto, lent them $16 million to do this to our community, and we're here to, taking our message to the city. In your time on Texada, have you had logging to that scale before? Absolutely not. Salt Spring hasn't seen this kind of logging on the island since, well, it was clear cut in the 1930s and our forests have just The protest moves to the streets of Vancouver. As more and more people join, the campaign raises $600,000. And that amount could trigger another six million from governments and other organizations. A full year after the logging began, the trees continue to fall. Except for one small parcel of land, the developers turned down all offers. Our biggest fear is that governments and other agencies will walk away from the table, taking their money with them.
In spite of the breakdown in talks, the money keeps coming in. An anonymous donor gives $100,000. to the police. Um, I also want to say that that's the third time that that man has done that, So, and it was to people that have cameras, so he obviously doesn't like cameras for some reason. This is a classic conflict of uh, between individual rights and community uh, rights, uh, uh, the, the, or the effect on the commons of private action. Uh, when uh, it's, uh, to, to me, it's um, unacceptable that uh, one or two businessmen from outside the community can walk into this community, change its character, change the physical landscape, impact the environment in a very serious way on their way to turning the forest into money. That's all they are interested in. They have no other agenda except turning the forest into money. The only people that can help us right now are government. We have been lobbying the government for seven months. We've had meetings with as many people that will listen to us. There are communities in every single corner of this province saying the same thing. The only way we can secure these watersheds, because every level of government is failing us. I have spoken to the Minister of the Environment for the federal government. I, I, I grabbed him and wrestled him to the ground just about on this issue. He said, give it to the province. So we go to the province. We've raised our own money at least come in and join us as partners, and they are refusing. And this court orders that any peace officer be authorized to arrest and remove any person who the peace officer has reasonable and probable grounds to believe is contravening or has contravened the provisions. Ready to do battle. And this court further orders that any peace officer who arrests and removes any person pursuant to this order be authorized to well. release that person from arrest. Crazy, brave people going out of their way to get arrested, complicating their lives with lawyers, courts, and maybe even going to jail. They're not breaking the law for personal gain. They want new laws, laws that strike a better balance between the rights of communities and the owners of private property. You guys move back, please. Move back.
time you'll be able to score high. I think that things are getting bigger and more impersonal. We have we have less to what what to, to see and what goes on than ever we did before. We're losing control, and we have to turn it around somehow and get things done in a different way. This isn't the way to do it. You know, we've always, in, especially in North America, have had this concept that if things are no longer good where you stand, you move on, you move west. Well. It's happened, right? There is nowhere else to go. And I think also with cyberspace and the kind of communication that's happening, this kind of global consciousness is emerging and that we as humans are starting to really realize that things are finite. There is no other place to go. You know, we're not gonna go live on the moon or on Mars or something like that. And all we have is this, there is no nowhere else. I think we have to change our attitude. We have to change our mindset. We have to change our, our assumptions about our place in the scheme of things. We are not strangers here. We don't own all of creation. Um, we don't own the planet. We, we have the privilege of living here uh, in the web of life. So, who won the battle for my island? Well, most people say the money won and the people lost. There are rumors about a federal park on some of the land. But the bad news is, I can still hear the chainsaws. No, it has been the most amazing conflict, and I'd say to many people that if the outcome wasn't so potentially disastrous, that this would be just one of the most wonderful experiences I've ever had. In I terms know. of the interaction with people, to see pe what people have been doing. And... Uh, well, there's vision here, you know, we're going to move on, and we're going to do positive things and show the world. And then the next thing that happens is, you know, Manulife lends $16 million to some bandits to come here and clear-cut the place. There's one drop of water on Mars and everyone's all excited, but look at all the water here. And no, nobody <laughs> wants true. to take care of it. <laughs> They know Wonderful. more about Mars than they do about newts. Did you know that? <laughs> they don't even know where newts go to lay their eggs. Because no one's ever found hard We should probably why. talk a bit about what's going to happen the day after Rob McDonald leaves the island. Organic agriculture. And we can have a, our genetic seed banks. A marketing organization to market all of our produce. Education. Mm-hmm. 